Hi, I'm Saba. I want to talk to you about the future, your future. We live in a world where our lives are shaped by our technology. The speed at which technology advances is increasing all the time. To someone living only a hundred years ago, the world we live in today would seem like a strange science fiction movie. So, think about it. Could we imagine the world a hundred years from now? Arthur C. Clarke once famously said, any sufficiently advanced technology is indistinguishable from magic. The 19th century was the era of the Industrial Revolution. The 20th century, the Computer Revolution. What technology will define the 21st century? What form will the magic take? My guess, quantum physics. Let's put this into context. Let's go back a hundred years. years, years. the year 2110 would look back a hundred years to today and wonder how primitive everything is. Today's technological marvels will look as quaint and as funny as that supercomputer. Quantum physics is the study of the extremely small, the fundamental building blocks of our reality. In order to keep improving our world, we have to come to grips with the quantum world. How small is small? Compare this grain of sand to the entire planet Earth. If I could hold an electron in my hand, the grain of sand would seem as large as the Earth just did. When you're working on this scale, the rules change. The thing that makes the quantum world so fascinating is that things don't work the way we think they should. For example, you probably think it's impossible to be at two places at once. In the quantum world, not so clear cut. The quantum world is quirky and strange. Nothing else illustrates that quirkiness better than the infamous two slit experiment. Let's go take a look. See you down there. The quantum world is the world of the basic building blocks of our reality. There is no vision because light here comes in large clumps. There is no sound because the gaseous molecules we call air are far larger than we are. We're interested in the things that get together to form atoms. Early researchers thought that atoms were extremely small versions of a solar system. They thought that electrons orbited the nucleus just like the Earth orbits the Sun. Further research showed similarities were outnumbered by the differences. Today, we know that the solar system analogy is wrong. 
One of the defining experiments that made this clear is known as the two-slit experiment. Let's try it now. Let's try this on the human scale first. Take a wall with two gaps, like this, a ball and a marker. Throw the ball repeatedly at the gaps. Whenever the ball passes through one of the gaps, mark the spot where it hit the back wall. Do it often enough and a pattern will emerge. A pattern something like this. When we try this on the quantum scale, we get a surprising result. Using a much smaller screen and firing a steady stream of single photons, we also get a pattern. The surprising thing is that it looks like this. If photons were only a particle, the result would be the same as with the ball, and it clearly isn't. The pattern made by the photons is a very familiar one. In classical physics, this is the pattern caused by diffraction. Diffraction is caused when two waveforms meet and interfere with each other. This suggests that photons have wave-like properties. It is now known that particles such as electrons and photons have characteristics of both waves and particles. This is known as particle wave duality. It's now clear that the thing that hits the partition is less like a ball and more like a wave. Let's have a look at that. Imagine an electric field with a shape something like this. Now imagine it has an exact mirror opposite, like this. Extend those waves around their centres and you have a circular field. When the two waveforms are exactly opposite, they reinforce each other and become a standing wave. Just like a wave in the ocean hitting a barrier, the wave penetrates the screen in both openings. The resulting disturbance in the wave causes ripples that meet on the far side. Where they meet, the shape of the waves increases or decreases due to the collision. The high and low parts of the joined waves hitting the back screen causes the diffraction pattern. So now we understand why we get our photon through two slits at the same time. What's so magical about that? Nothing, except if we set the two-slit experiment up in such a way that we can observe the activity where the photon hits the partition, they stop being waves and start acting like particles. Why? No one knows, yet. The magic here is that somehow the photon knows when it's being observed and decides to change its behaviour. Take the observer away and we're back to waves. The elegance of the electron structure is its basic simplicity. It is only two spherical waves gracefully undulating around the centre, each transforming into the other. These structures become the crystalline matter of solid state. If you could see its wave structure, a crystal might appear like many shimmering bubbles, neatly joined in a geometric arrays. The arrays are held together with immense rigidity, a property of space. This structure settles a century-old paradox of whether particles are waves or point-like bits of matter. They are waves. They are wave structures in space. There is nothing but space. space.